Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty and what we're going to be doing in this video is counting down the top 10 weapons that fans would like to see return in either current or future Call of Duty games. A few videos ago I made a video discussing the future of DLC in Call of Duty and at the end of that video I asked you guys what weapons from Call of Duty years past would you like to see return in either Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, or possibly even all the way up in the future with Infinity Ward's next game which we're going to presume is going to be Ghost 2. What weapons would you guys like to see and in the video description of there I put links to a straw poll where you can go and vote on any weapon in Call of Duty history, primary weapons, along with secondary weapons, not counting DLC weapons, I don't think that would be entirely fair, going from Call of Duty 4 all the way to Call of Duty Ghosts, and just basically you guys go ahead and vote, and you can vote on multiple weapons, and we tally it up to see exactly what weapons you guys would like to see return in future Call of Duty games. Now, I want to kind of preface this by saying that these poll results were closed at 1 p.m. Eastern on July 24th of 2015, that is when I tallied up all the votes, and I added them all together, so you guys can still check out those polls they are still active for you guys to go ahead and look at and vote on but this is when i took the results i took the results once again on july 24th 2015 at 1 p.m without further ado let's go ahead and hop into this and discuss the top 10 weapons that call of duty fans would like to see return in either current or future call of duty games The MP7. This is a good one to start off. I think this is a fantastic weapon to start off here. The MP7 has been one of my favorite weapons in Call of Duty since it was first implemented back in Modern Warfare 3. I love the way the weapon looks, the way it sounds, and just the general low recoil, high fire rate, and good damage that it puts out. During Modern Warfare 3, it was actually considered by most people to be one of the overpowered weapons. It was considered by most to be the best submachine gun in the game. And it was also featured in Black Ops 2. And in Black Ops 2, it was also a very powerful weapon. It was my number two most used weapon behind the Remington 870 shotgun in fact so I loved using this weapon it was the only weapon in Black Ops 2 I ended up getting a 100 plus kill gameplay with I got a bunch of Moabs with it back in Modern Warfare 3 and all in all I love this gun it's a really cool gun so I'd definitely love to see it return in future Call of Duty games I'm glad to see that you guys like it as well and that's why it is coming in here at number 10. the DSR-50. I was surprised to actually see this all the way down here at number 9. I would have assumed it would be a lot higher in the top 10 weapons that people would like to see return in future Call of Duty games. This was one of two bolt action snipers that we saw in Black Ops 2 and it was by far the most used bolt action sniper up until the day it got nerfed. That was a sad day for a lot of snipers in Black Ops 2. The day that DSR-50 got nerfed and the ballista kind of became like the new sniper that everybody was running around with. But I still love the DSR even though it was nerfed in terms of its fire rate, I still enjoyed using it. I thought it was a very fun sniper. I thought it was very unique in that it was a bolt action 50 caliber sniper rifle, kind of akin to the Barrier 50 caliber of years past, but it has this kind of like a new twist on it and that it looks a lot different. It's got a really cool and looking unique scope and it's also a bolt action, which I really, really enjoyed. So I can see why it's here at number nine. I can see why people would like to have this return in future Call of Duty games. One's going to assume that if it does return, people are going to go back to its pre-nerfed stage where it's actually possible to get a quad feed without getting a collateral. That would be pretty good, all things considered, and I can definitely see why the DSR-50 has come in here at number 9. The Galil. I can see why the Galil was featured here at number 8. The Galil was a fantastic rifle, and I'm really sad to see that it's only implemented in Black Ops 1. It was only implemented in the original Black Ops, with the exception that you also could use it in Black Ops 2 via Zombies mode, but I would have loved to be able to use this thing in the multiplayer. It was a fantastic rifle, one of my favorites to use in the original Black Ops. It was in my top 5 weapons. Most people used it because it was just a very powerful rifle that did not require a red dot sight. The iron sight were fantastic. It was ridiculously good looking. It was kind of akin to some of the AKs in that it didn't have a ridiculous fire rate, but it was really high damage. The iron sights were great. The recoil was very manageable. It had a really cool sound. And just overall, I loved using this weapon. It is, once again, one of my most used weapons from the original Black Ops. It is in my top five weapons. If I recall correctly, it's probably about number four, and it's probably my second or third most used assault rifle in that game. But once again, just a fantastic gun. I loved using it in the multiplayer. I loved using it in Zombies. It's one of the best guns you can actually have in Zombies, and I would love for this to return somehow in Black Ops 3, just whether it's a DLC weapon, whether it's actually just built into the game by default, or even if we could just use it in Zombies mode, I would love for the Galil to return because it's one of my favorite weapons in Call of Duty, and that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you guys voted in here at number 8. 
the Vector. Now this one took me by surprise because personally I was never a giant fan of the Vector. Now of course the original Vector that we saw was actually featured in Modern Warfare 2 and I was never a big fan of it in that game. I opted out for the other submachine guns being the MP45, the MP5K, or even to the Mini Uzi. I just never really found myself using the Vector much in Modern Warfare 2, although I think I reason why people loved it so much is because it really had no recoil and it was a pretty high fire rate submachine gun. So that's probably why the reason people loved it, but I didn't like it personally. I didn't like the way it looked, I didn't like the way it sounded or the way it shot. It was just something about the weapon that did not click with me, so I was never a big fan of it. Fast forward to Black Ops 2 where we saw the new iteration of the Vector. I actually changed my mind on the Vector a lot. I thought it was a very good submachine gun to use in Black Ops 2. Admittedly, I had not used it a ton, but I thought it was well improved compared to what we saw in Modern Warfare 2. And then going forward into Call of Duty Ghost, it turns out the Vector was like the most powerful with submachine gun in that game. Like the Vector was like overpowered for a long period of time in Call of Duty Ghost. So it's definitely changed a lot over the years. And I think I can see why people like it. It doesn't generally have a lot of recoil. It's usually a pretty powerful submachine gun. Usually it looks pretty cool. And overall, it's just one of those guns that's been featured in multiple Call of Duty games. So it's had multiple games and multiple chances for fans to fall in love with it. So I think I can definitely see why people love the Vector. Just for me personally, I was never a giant fan of it. But regardless, it's not about my personal preference. It's about your guys' personal preference. And you guys vote in the Vector here at number 7. the Thompson. I was so happy. I am proud of all of you for voting in the Tommy Gun here because the Thompson is one of my favorite weapons in Call of Duty history. Of course, this is the World War II era Thompson, which was last featured in Call of Duty World at War, which was released in 2008 and has not been featured in the Call of Duty series since then, with the exception that it was featured in some of the zombie maps that we saw in Black Ops as well as Black Ops 2. This gun is so much fun to use. It was so powerful, yet at the same time so rewarding to get kills with. It had very unique iron sights. Of course, you had the round drum on there, which is so iconic to the Thompson itself, and it was just a fantastic overall weapon to use. If perhaps you never played World at War and really don't know what the Thompson feels like, picture it uh, kind of like the ASM-1 in Advanced Warfare, but in a World War II style, and that's basically what the Thompson is. It's one of my favorite weapons of Call of Duty history. I would love for it to return in Black Ops 3 somehow, whether it's a side mission from the campaign where we use it for one mission and therefore we're actually allowed to have it in the multi because it was still featured in the campaign and it's still canon and still part of the story. I would love for that to happen somehow or even like we discussed, possibly as a nostalgic DLC that we could see in Black Ops 3. Just regardless, bring the Thompson back into the Call of Duty scene, Treyarch. Please do it. I love this weapon so much. And apparently you guys do as well because you voted in here at number 6. The Desert Eagle. This was by far the biggest surprise for me on this list. In fact, it's hard for me to find footage of this pistol on my YouTube channel because it's a pistol. While it's very good, there's a very limited amount of Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty 4 footage here on my channel, and very little of that actually features the Desert Eagle. But regardless, I did find some gameplay for you guys to use here in today's video. So we're looking at the Desert Eagle. Let's look at the Call of Duty 4 variant. Now, the Call of Duty 4 Desert Eagle was considered by most players to be the pistol of the game. And those of you guys that have played Call of Duty 4, Back me up on this in the comments. Back me up on this. The Desert Eagle from COD 4 was the best semi-automatic pistol in Call of Duty history. So good. So powerful. It was about a two-hit kill at just about all ranges. It's like three-hit kill at just about maximum, right? It was so powerful. If you played hardcore, people would call it deagle sniping and that you could just use this pistol as if it were a primary weapon because it was a one-shot kill anywhere on the body if you were playing hardcore. It was that powerful. It had an iconic look, an iconic sound, and everybody loved using it. In fact, once you hit level 55, you unlocked a golden version of the Desert Eagle, which of course was really, really cool. Fast forward into Modern Warfare 2, they brought back the Desert Eagle. Myself and just while everybody else, when that game came out, were like, yes, this is going to be the best pistol ever. They're bringing back the Deagle. Woo! And then, of course, it was not nearly as good as what it was in Call of Duty 4. They nerfed it a little bit and that they added recoil to it. And of course, they changed the look of it, which a lot of people didn't like. And they also made it so that the time between shots was a little bit delayed because, of course, with the extra recoil, you couldn't spam it like you could in Call of Duty 4. Thus, it was a lot weaker. And then you look at the Desert Eagle, a nerfed Desert Eagle versus the machine pistols of Modern Warfare 2. You look at the G18s and you look at all the other ones that they had. It's like, yeah, that's not really going to cut it. It's just really not going to cut it. So it was sad to say, but the Desert Eagle in Modern Warfare 2 was not nearly as good as what it was once in Call of Duty 4. Fast forward to Modern Warfare 3. They brought back the Desert Eagle again, probably just for nostalgia's sake. But again, it was just like it was in Modern Warfare 2 with the increased recoil and the time between shots. And it was just never as good as what it once was back in Call of Duty 4. 
I would love for this to return in future Call of Duty games like it was in Call of Duty 4. That was my favorite pistol ever. In terms of semi automatic pistols, it was by far the best in my own personal opinion. Of all the pistols that we see in Call of Duty history, the COD 4 Desert Eagle was the best one, and I would love to see it return. And if you guys never played with it, the Call of Duty 4 version of the Desert Eagle, picture it a lot like the TAC 45 that we saw in Black Ops 2, but with only a 7 round magazine, but more damage. Picture it like that, and that's about what it was like, and it was really, really cool. I would love to see that return in future Call of Duty games. Apparently, you guys would as well. That's why you voted in here at number five. The AK-47. No surprise here, right? No surprises here. Number four, we have the AK-47, one of the most used and most iconic weapons in history. People that know nothing about weapons, know nothing about guns whatsoever, they can still identify and point out an AK-47 because it is so iconic in the world. Everybody knows who this weapon is, and thus it's been featured in a lot of Call of Duty games. We saw it here originally in Call of Duty 4, we saw an iteration of it in Modern Warfare 2, we saw it in Black Ops, we saw it in Modern Warfare 3, and it has just been one of the most iconic weapons in Call of Duty history. Now, over the past couple of Call of Duty games, that being Call of Duty Ghost as well as Advanced Warfare, we have seen the AK-12, which if you guys are wondering what the difference is, the AK-12 is essentially just a modernized version of the AK-47. The AK-47 is a very old design, and the AK-12 just tried to improve upon it a little bit, and so it basically it's a more futuristic, more modern version of the AK-12. But still, you guys say you would like to see the original AK-47 back, which I completely agree. I love using the AK-47 any game that has an AK in it, I am happy with it because it has awesome iron sights in just about any shooter game ever. First person or third person, doesn't matter if it's any game out there, the AK performs just about the same in every game ever. It usually has a good amount of recoil, but not an unmanageable amount. It usually has amazing iron sights, it has the same iconic look and the same iconic sound to it. It is one of the best weapons in history, and I would love to use it in future Call of Duty games. And I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of AK style weapons in the future just because it's such an iconic weapon that people really kind of expect out of their shooter games. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I believe you guys voted here at number four. The Ballista, the second sniper rifle to be featured here on our list, and in fact, the second bolt action sniper, and also the second bolt action sniper rifle from Black Ops 2 here to be featured on this list. Now, I think originally in Black Ops 2, the DSR-50 was the more popular sniper. I feel as though the majority of the community went towards the DSR, but like we discussed earlier on in the video, after the DSR-50 received its nerf, everybody flocked over to the Ballista and never looked back. Everybody uses the Ballista now, man. You see so many people running around with that thing and with good reason, I think. Me, personally, I leaned more towards the DSR-50 because I like the way it looks a little bit better, but the Ballista was fantastic. It was a very effective bolt-action sniper rifle, one of the best ones that we've seen in recent history. When I think of very good bolt-action sniper rifles from years past, I think of the Ballista, I think of the Intervention, I think of the M40A3, and the Ballista is the most recent, amazing bolt-action sniper in my own personal opinion. We had some good snipers, of course, in Call of Duty Ghost, but I didn't think that they were really as good as the Ballista or the DSR-50. Here in Advanced Warfare, we have the Morse, which is good, but I still think the DSR-50 and the Ballista are better than what we have here in Advanced Warfare as well. So it's definitely no surprise to me that you guys have voted in the Ballista from Black Ops 2 onto the top 10 list of weapons you would like to see return in future Call of Duty games. And you love it so much that you actually voted it in here at number 3. the ACR. I expected the ACR, I'll be honest, I expected the ACR to be here on this list, but I had no idea that you guys would actually vote the ACR as the number two weapon that you would like to see return in future Call of Duty games. The ACR itself, of course, was first featured in Modern Warfare 2, and it was kind of known in that game as being the weapon that has zero recoil. And let's be honest with ourselves here, the Modern Warfare 2 guns had very little recoil, but the ACR had even less. It was like this laser rifle that you could just take people out just completely across the map. It was so good. It was kind of akin to the M4, like the M4A1 from Modern Warfare 2, or maybe even like the M4 Carbine from Call of Duty 4, in that it was an assault rifle that had very little recoil, a pretty high fire rate, and low damage, but it just seemed to do even more damage while at the same time having less recoil than the M4, and therefore just kind of like a better version of it overall. Fast forward into Modern Warfare 3, it was like the broken weapon of Modern Warfare 3. Everybody used the ACR. It was by far the most used assault rifle in that game, with good reason. It had very little recoil, it hit like a truck, it looked cool, it sounded cool, it was amazing. The iron sights were good enough that you didn't need a red dot if you didn't want to, but of course, if you want to be super accurate, 
down range. Of course, you could use the ACR with a red dot sight. It was just a very good rifle in that game, and usually the most used weapons, and just looking at the kill feed in Modern Warfare 3, you would notice that a lot of people use the ACR. So just by the fact that it was the most used assault rifle in that game, it was probably at the same time the most beloved, and that probably explains why you guys voted the ACR here at number two. The Scar H or the Scar L, whichever you prefer. Ladies and gentlemen, I had no idea that the Scar was such a popular weapon here in the Call of Duty franchise. So, of course, the Scar H was one of my favorite weapons in Modern Warfare 2, and it was also one of my favorite weapons in Black Ops 2. The Scar L was a very good weapon, of course, in Modern Warfare 3, but I had no idea that of all the weapons in Call of Duty history, every single primary weapon, along with every single secondary weapon, this was the most beloved one by you guys. You guys did the voting here and you would like to see it return in a future Call of Duty game. I had no idea. So the reason why I feature the Scar H and the Scar L together is they're kind of the same gun. Really they just have a couple minor changes. So of course the original Scar H was in Modern Warfare 2. It was a super high damage relatively average fire rate rifle that only had a 20 round magazine skip forward into Black Ops 2. It was also featured in that game as the Scar H where they gave it a 30 round magazine as compared to the 20 round magazine from Modern Warfare 2. Damage was about the same. Fire rate was slightly slower I believe and then you look at the Scar L in Modern Warfare 3 it was basically the same idea as the Modern Warfare 2 Scar H with the exception that it did slightly less damage but had a slightly higher fire rate. All in all they were really the same weapon they just kind of changed it in and out every single game the same way that they changed around the AK-47 depending on which Call of Duty game you're looking at but yes I still can't believe it the Scar of all weapons in the game is like the most voted for one that you guys would like to see return either in a current or a future Call of Duty game. That's mind blowing to me that just it was a shocker it was really a shocker to me because I like the Scar. The Scar is one of my favorite weapons. I use it in every game it comes out in and I'm usually satisfied with it in every single game it comes out in. I would say the weakest one would probably be the Scar L from Modern Warfare 3. I didn't use it nearly as much as I use the Scar H from Modern Warfare 2 or the Scar H from Black Ops 2. But I still liked it. I still like the Scar L from Modern Warfare 3. It was still pretty good. But by no means I expect it to be the number one most voted for weapon here in Call of Duty. That is just insane to me. That is just insane to me. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the top 10 weapons that you guys would like to see return in future Call of Duty games. Number one being the Scar. Number two being the ACR. Number three being the Ballista. Number four being the AK-47. Number five being the Desert Eagle Pistol. Number six being the Thompson. Number seven being the Vector. Number eight being the Galil. Number nine being a DSR-50. And coming in at number 10 the mp7 submachine gun that is the list of weapons that you guys would like to see return in either current or future call of duty games based on your voting so if you guys would like to check out the polls and look at the polls for yourselves feel free to do so there's going to be links to these polls down in the video description just like the original video but keep in mind i looked at these polls and add up all the votes today on july 24th of 2015 at 1 p.m eastern time so of course the numbers could be a little different by the time you guys actually go ahead and look at it because of course people are still able to vote on those polls but so you guys can go ahead and check them out for yourselves and just look and be like, wow, so these are the weapons that people like the most and these are the weapons that people like the least. That's also interesting to look at the weapons that people really didn't care about. The weapons that people just like, whatever, I don't care much about that rifle at all. I don't care much about that submachine gun at all or things of that nature. Some interesting and honorable mentions here. Let's think about the fact that not a single light machine gun was featured here in the top 10. The HS-10 was actually the least voted for shotgun. All of the least voted for rifles were semi-automatic ones. Like, there's a lot of interesting things that we can actually see from these polls, and I encourage you guys to check them out for yourselves. Once again, link down in the video description. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed this top 10 video, and if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.